Thank you for staying with us. The first quarter of 2022 has been eventful for the global oil and gas industry, with oil prices reaching their highest in a while. This appears that the industry is now in recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic contributing to increased oil price. And it's the fact that many countries are now opening their borders and dropping the COVID-19 protocols they have put in place. However, with the operationalization of the Petroleum Industry Act of 2022, uh, this may signal the recovery for Nigeria's oil and gas industry, bringing its performance to a level better than the pre-pandemic levels, uh, despite myriads of challenges facing the industry. Well, let's get to the discussion. And I'm being joined live from our Abuja studios by the Chief Executive Officer of Captree, Mr. Bode Shomi. Thank you so much for your time. It's really good to have you on Business Nigeria today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure to always be here. Thank you so much for that. Uh, let me start with this report I stumbled on before coming to the studio. Nigeria's oil sector attracts $61 million in foreign exchange in Q1 of 2022. This is really low compared to just Q3 of 2016 that we had $171.63 million investment into that sector. What is responsible for this? Well, the, 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 the primary factor is the amount of oil that we are producing. So uh, there's a lot of uh, sabotage. There's a lot of oil that is stolen. Um, how it is stolen, where it is stolen, and who sells it is a different ballgame. But if you sell 100 um, liters worth of a product and you are now selling 60 liters worth of the same product, it's very likely that the prices will be lower than what it was for 100. So basically, we are selling less oil. And as a result, there will be less income. It's as simple as that. But with the PIA, which we all looked at, thinking that that was the way to go, and that would open up the space, it seems like, for me as a layman, we say we are not getting enough from the signing of uh, that uh, bill into act, into an act. Well, this this, um, this issue is independent of the PIA, so it's not really. Um, something about a new framework for, um, for the value chain or a new framework for sales. So this is about criminal activities within the value chain interrupting it. So we have cases like in Hez Oil, that's the uh, petroleum company owned by the, the, the former chairman, I mean the chairman of UBA, saying in very simple terms that they got less than 15% of the oil that they pumped. So in simple terms, if they pumped 100 liters of oil, they were getting like 15 liters at the end of the chain. Now, it's, I mean, there's no magic to it. If you don't have the amount of product that to sell, you are just definitely going to have less money. So it's not a PIA. It's not about structure. It's not about redefining the value chain. It's just about criminal elements stealing the volume of crude available. And once the volume of crude is reduced, as it is in this case, you are going to have less income. It's as simple as that. What can be done? Let's try and provide solutions to this continuous all theft all that has been happening in that sector. At the time we spoke about this, seeing the NNPC, petroleum resources, security agencies moving uh, to all of these uh, sites to check what is happening for first-hand information and all of that? What is that all of it? What more can be done? What about those buying this crude that don't come directly? Well, th th there has to be the political will to stop the drain and the theft. That is very important to note. You know, because um, stealing oil, crude oil, is not like um, stealing tomatoes or stealing... Um, it takes a structure... It takes equipment, it takes the quality agencies, and it takes um, end buyers because it's not what is available to everybody to just buy. So it is for Nigeria to have the political will to go through this value chain of theft and stop it. So we can sit here and talk about the processes. Yes, the law enforcement agencies need to do their work. Yes, the communities themselves need to disencourage things like this and disincentivize it. Um, the, there needs to be diplomatic approach 
to the nations where these buyers are coming in to buy it because it's not unknown people that buy it you know so there are all those things but above all we as a people must be willing to stop it because without that it will just amount to pouring water on the back of a duck divestment of also for this oil companies we see that happening uh, in recent times uh, most of these oil companies ready to let their assets go and move on uh, can you also take us through what could be responsible for this ugly trend and what it means for the sector well well first of all is a is a catch-22 thing in the sense that um there's a lot of pressure on the iocs because i mean and i'm pressure from the local communities basically to signifying the fact that, that they are not able to have a profitable in terms of their operations there the other side of it is that if indeed those assets are sold and they are sold to nigerian private businesses you actually empower the local industry and you empower the local companies in their capacity to expand and become genuine multinationals but the truth be told there is no environment where sabotage of businesses will lead to prosperity i mean it will lead to some people getting money you you now can develop a rent seeking situation but at the end of the day for the industry to grow to expand for genuine prosperity to come in there must be a convergence of minds and there must be a meeting point where those who are aggrieved or those who have concerned or those who have reasons to sabotage must be able to agree with those who are doing their work so that all these things end so irrespective of whether it happens with the iocs or it happens with the local communities i mean it happens with the local oil companies there must be an end to it for the industry to expand and for genuine development to happen within the local communities interesting stuff uh, recently where was this uh deal between i think Seplat, exxon mobil and uh, all of that we read about it and the nnpc uh exercises pass one way or the other uh on that deal and many say that this could send a wrong signal to investors and we know that we need these investors at this time in your thoughts NNPC, yes, trying to make more money now. It's a, it's a limited company and uh, all of that. But do you think this is the way to go? Well, the NNPC came out with his statement and with an official reasoning, primarily because they have the right of first refusal in the matter. However, having said that, it is an industry that only NMPC cannot grow. So if all companies, all local companies become NMPC, we will be actually regressing. So there has to be a way in which NMPC in doing hard legitimate operations, and in this case it was the upstream commission, in doing the legitimate operations, need to connect with the industry such that the confidence that is needed for them to attract investment need not be betrayed. Because at the end of the day, the growth will still be ultimately private sector led. Whether it is the gas master plan, they will need the involvement of the IOCs, they will need the involvement of private sector companies, they will need investors of off the cars for the gas and all that. So there is a need in whatever they do to carry the industry along and ensure that investor confidence is restored or at least not um, not battered in this case. So whether this were the case or not, the feedback that filters into the general market was a case of the upstream commission not necessarily handling the case in a perfect way. So I'm sure they possibly have good reasons for the, whatever they did, but there is a need for that reason to be communicated and distilled to the general public in a way that they are happy with it. A very very interesting uh, let's move further uh, to look at the price of crude at, at the moment which is obviously looking very good but Nigeria is not getting much from this well under production and uh, and all of this so are we going to continue like this and if not what can be done for we to reap the positives of high crude oil price because at this time we should be smiling to the banks 
Well, uh, like I said, I mean, it's related to the first question, which basically okay. says we had so so amount of money coming in, and the yeah, amount so of money reduced. coming in is a disconnect from what we had a few months ago. So there is theft, there is sabotage, there is a lot of things that insinuates that there is a systemic pilferage of what is the commonwealth of every one of us. So it is incumbent on the powers that be. It is incumbent on those who manage the economy to have the political will to resolve the situation. This is not something that a one person can do, but this is something that one person can speak to the conscience, to the mind, to the will of people to ensure that the right things are done. Because at the end of the day, Yes, this is a period of um, a lot of income in terms of the fact that there's the Ukraine crisis and prices of crude oil are high and will probably be like that till the end of the year. But it is also in the interest of everyone that this benefits everyone. And I'm talking about the generality of the people by being distilled through the organs of government and other organs of governance that should benefit from it in terms of infrastructure development, in terms of payment of educational fees, in terms of, you know, the related proper processes and that needs to be i mean that needs to be carried out by government at the highest level without that everything else is wishful thinking mm. and on the other side subsidy uh payment continues to go on the high side which many say uh looks uh, might be unsustainable or clearly looks unsustainable for a country that is servicing debt with uh, oh, more than 80% of its revenue. Uh, what's your take with regards to subsidy and um, sustaining it at this very critical time? Well, subsidy at the figures that we are dealing with it is clearly and outrightly unsustainable. However, it is at what stage are we going to collapse? You know, if you look at the, the movie The Titanic, when the ship started to sink those who were on deck were still singing and they were dancing but the ship was singing um when you look at the figures the macroeconomic figures that were given it shows a sinking ship we must not confuse the fact that um the fact that things look all right to mean that things are all right so the the president has said it before he came in that subsidy was a fraud and he, he believed that there was no subsidy and this is about eight years later we have rather increase in astronomical increases in the f figures of subsidy i think um, as a gentleman that he is he owes the nation an explanation that he has found out either that um the the, the situation is complex or he has found out that subsidy actually exists and this is the way out of it or we cannot go out of it but whatever be the case there is a need to 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 um to reach out and connect with the people to them know that these figures of subsidies that we are dealing with needs to be resolved i i believe that those are the issues that are at play that needs to be addressed before i let you go uh, mr shodun let's talk a little bit around refining uh, we've seen that that is also one problem that we face as a country and the npc uh, says and the ministry has said that i'm um, we should expect the Port Harcourt refinery, uh, which about 1.5 billion US dollars has been uh, well, invested in, that we should expect that to come on board maybe before the end of this year. We've also talked a lot about the Dangote refinery and a lot of expectations also with regards to that. Uh, do you think that this would be a solution to some of our problems as we move on in that sector? Uh, they may mitigate the problems, but uh, they are not. They are, they are not magic. They are not going to end the problems overnight. And and there are a number of reasons for that. One one of the challenges we have, with respect to the regulated downstream products for petroleum, is the fall of the naira. So, um, crude oil is sold at a certain price. It is global. I mean, uh, it's a commodity, so it has a global standard price. So, the people who are local refiners are they going to get crude oil at a subsidized rate? Or are they going to get it for free? You know, th those are questions to ask. Because if they are buying it at international rate, the cost of refining does not discriminate. It's the same everywhere in the world, at least in a, in a broad sense. So the, the products are going to come out at a certain rate. 
the issue will be that yes it may be slightly less than uh, what we are doing now but will it be lower or will it be at the same price at which it is currently being subsidized that's the million dollar question that everybody needs to ask so yes we are excited yes we are very positive we are anxious we are optimistic but we also need to be realistic in terms of the impact the refin the refineries would will, will, will bring to the table uh mr Badesho, we are moving to an election year and uh, everyone is trying to at least put a blueprint up what do you think should be the focus with regards to the oil and gas space just setting an agenda uh, for anyone that wins the election i think basically people are going to ask i mean the industry is going to ask how are they going to help solve um, the elephant in the room i mean and basically that will be the theft of um, crude oil the second obviously will be a subsidy that there has to be an answer to it is it going to be eliminated if it's going to be eliminated is it going to be eliminated you know it's not enough to just say it's going to be eliminated you has to be a reason there has to be a methodology there has to be a pathway that you can walk us through that will make it believable so as simple as those two things are they're huge they're humongous because it will basically involve confronting cartels uh, and, and entrenched systems who are hell-bent on well, on personal benefit at the expense of the nation so we wish the next president the best of luck in, in challenging whatever is what is going to be a very very challenging situation a challenging situation it's a good way to leave it i've been speaking to the ceo of cap tree is mr bode Shomumi. thank you so much uh, for your time on the show we really do appreciate this we don't take it for granted do enjoy the rest of your day thank you Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.